guys today. This one is going to be a Nightmare Falls video. It is These Are the Darkest Days in Sports History, Volume 2, so I assume it's a Volume 1. I don't know if I've reacted to it or not. I didn't realize this was a Nightmare Falls video until like a few minutes ago. But yeah, these are the darkest days in sports history. Again, sports are really entertaining, so it really sucks when like accidents happen in sports. But again, it's a lot of stuff's going to happen, you know what I mean? And hopefully, as long as you can get back to playing, you know, like let's say... I don't know, these are the darkest days, so I can imagine some crazy stuff happens, so... Volume 2, 10 minutes long, Nightmare Files. Before we get started, be sure to give this video a like. Comment down below if you guys want to see more Nightmare Files. What else do you guys want to see? Any suggestions you may have? And yeah, let's go guys. You can know my brother if you hear him, it's like midnight, but he's st still awake. I'm shocked by the death of Hank Gathers, Loyola Marymount. This is going to be a depressing video. But normally with the Darman, I'm pretty upset, so this will make me upset too, but just more in a sad way, not angry. Hopefully. Before we get to the video, I'd like to talk to you about one of the biggest games of 2020, Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, I'm muting that for now. <laughs> I'm muting it. Ed editing is out. Editing it out is just going to be too much effort for me, so I'm not going to do that, but... <laughs> Yeah, before you guys, before this, you know, is done, be sure to subscribe to me and number follows as well, and turn on post notifications. I noticed that like 75% of you guys are not subscribed, so please subscribe if you guys watch my channel, and like my channel, of course, and like the content, so if you subscribe, it'll help me out, and if you like the video, it'll help me out, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll tell me what to react more to, but uh, yeah, we're just waiting on this to, uh, you know, not be about this anymore. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna unmute it now. Off of that, they're also releasing 14 new champions just in time for the holidays, along with a whole host of holiday events and tournaments. I, I just got back from work, so I'm really tired. Better time to start playing. And here's the best part: the raid team. They're giving away a bunch of new. Like this should be at the end of the video. Plus a crazy special champion to help get everyone started in the tower bulwark. I really don't care. He's pretty good in clan boss, and he's also going to be a huge help in the tower against those bosses. If you want to get a huge head start in raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. And if you are a new player, you'll get free boy champion bulwark, 50 gems, XP booster, some energy refills, and even an ancient oh shard God, so that you get in the game. This treasure will be waiting for you here. Finally, Jesus. Dark days in sports history. Reggie Lewis. 1993. I wasn't even born yet. Reggie Lewis, born November 21st, 1965 in Baltimore, Maryland, was destined for basketball success at a very young age. He played on the top high school team in the nation as a senior in high school playing with three other future NBA players. That's awesome. Lewis played college ball at Northeastern University where he was a star player averaging 22 points per game and 8 rebounds per game. That high school success then translated to the collegiate level, where Lewis showcased his talents for four years at Northeastern University. Lewis dominance at Northeastern included three seasons of at least 23 points per game. His average collegiate numbers were 22 points per game, 7 rebounds per game. After performing at such a high level at the university, right around the corner from the Boston Garden, it seemed like a match made in heaven when the Boston Celtics drafted Lewis with the 22nd overall pick in the 1987 draft. That's awesome. Lewis had a quiet rookie season, but he blossomed during the 1988-89 season. <clears throat> the Celtics witnessed a breakout season from Lewis as he averaged 18 and a half points per game. His scoring output spiked to full 14 points per game from his rookie season, and he continued at that level for the next five seasons. Lewis scored a career high of 20.8 points per game during both his fifth and sixth season with the Celtics. That's good. His only All Star appearance came during the 1991 92 season, which was his second to last season with the Boston Celtics. But while the promising forward's presence in Boston was growing, tragedy was on the horizon. Lewis collapsed on the floor during a playoff series game with the Charlotte Hornets in 1993 after just 13 minutes of action in which he scored 15 points. After he finally got up, he looked confused and dazed as he headed to the Celtic bench. 
Lewis returned briefly to the game, but was eventually pulled due to dizziness and shortness of breath. He did not play for the remainder of the series, which lasted only four games. Shortly after, while practicing on July 27, Lewis collapsed for a second time and went into cardiac arrest. His life tragically ended that day, robbing the Celtics of a budding star. The Celtics honored Lewis's legacy on March 22, 1995, when they retired his number 35 jersey. It's so sad though. Like what happened? Like what made that happen, you know? Like what? what like what would cause that? Tyler Skaggs. 2019. That's a big jump from 1993 to 2019. Tyler Skaggs. Born July 13, 1991 in Woodland Hills, California. Showed greatness at a young age in regards to baseball. Immediately after graduating high school, he was drafted by the Los Angeles Angels, where he spent the majority of his career. His best year came in 2018. Following the year, he pretty much had the same season. By late June, and soon after pitching against Oakland, Skaggs and the rest of his team headed for Dallas for a four-game series against Texas Rangers. By all accounts, the 27-year-old was on a fast track to major success, leading the team in both wins and strikeouts for the season. Little did he or his fans know that he'd never pitch again. Just hours before the Angels were set to face the Rangers, Skaggs was found unresponsive in his South Lake, Texas hotel room on July 1, 2019. He was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy conducted on Skaggs found a mix of fentanyl, oxycodone, and alcohol in the system. A blood alcohol level of 0.12, to be exact. The report concluded that Skaggs choked on his own vomit, and his death was subsequently ruled an accident. It is believed that when he snorted oxycodone, he was likely unaware it contained fentanyl, the drug that contributed to the death of Prince in an overdose. He was several days Over short of his 28th birthday. And the Angels wore the number 45 patch for the rest of the 2019 season in his memory. That's sad. Yeah, because like a lot of stuff that... Because like fentanyl, you can only die within like just a, little, a very little amount. Of uh, uh, Fentanyl is like very dangerous. I'm pretty sure that's what fentanyl is. Pat Tillman, April 22nd, 2004. Pat Tillman. November 6, 1976, in Fremont, California, played football in high school and won a football scholarship to attend Arizona State University. He excelled there as both a student and linebacker for the Sun Devils. He helped the team defeat defending national champions, University of Nebraska in 1996, and later that season to win the Pac-10 conference title in a berth in the 1997 Rose Bowl. And he also won Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year. Timmon was selected in the seventh round of the 1998 NFL Draft by the Cardinals, for whom he played safety. He quickly earned a place as a starting player and was impressive enough to earn a generous contract from the St. Louis Rams. However, Tillman felt a sense of loyalty to the Cardinals and elected to stay with them for the 2001 season. After the September 11 attacks and the subsequent U.S.-led invasion of Afghanistan, Timmon was moved to examine his priorities. He elected to turn down the contract with the Cardinals and to enlist in the Army after the conclusion of the 2001 season. He joined up the spring of 2002 and trained to become an Army Ranger. Timmer was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, and in 2003, he served his first tour of duty to Iraq. In 2004, he and his unit were sent to Afghanistan to conduct operations to clear eastern Afghanistan of Taliban and Al-Qaeda fighters. In April 2004, Tillman's platoon was sent to patrol a province near the border of Pakistan. Following a breakdown of one of the patrol's vehicles, the platoon was separated into two groups, one that stayed with the vehicle and one that went to the nearby village. The group staying with the vehicle was caught in an enemy ambush, and the first group turned back to join the firefight. The lack of communication between the two segments of the platoon caused confusion and resulted in Tillman being killed by gunfire from the second group. The initial reports of Tillman's death stated that he was killed during an ambush. He was quickly awarded a Purple Heart and Silver Star, and Senator John McCain eulogized him during a nationally televised memorial service. This is depressing. It was only much later, under pressure from Tillman's family and the news media, that it came out that Tillman had died to friendly fire. 
Investigations revealed that actions had been taken to prevent the discovery of the circumstances under which he had been killed in order to allow the Army and the administration to earn increased public sympathy for their war efforts. Tillman was the subject of a 2009 biography, and he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2010. Honestly, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't like stories like these, like, again, I don't think this was suggested. I think this was just, like, a random Nightmare Falls video, and I was like, sure, you know, let's, let's do it, right? Yeah, this was a sad one, like, I hate videos like this, because, like, obviously we know that this happens all the time, especially with the war going on in Ukraine right now, we know, like, so many lives are being lost right now, and for what? For, for nothing. So it's just, like, it's really dep depressing, because, like, you, you hear about death all, all the time, and it's just, it's sad, you know what I mean? Like, you always hear about death. And a lot of the time, a lot of the time it can it can be prevented, but a lot of the time it also isn't, even though it really can be. So it's just really annoying. But there you have it, guys. I don't have much to say other than that was obviously depressing. They obviously had good careers, I guess, while they lasted. Obviously not long at all, but I, I hope they had fun playing while it lasted, I guess. I don't know what else to say, really, you know, because... But... Yeah, I hope they had fun. And rest in peace to them all now. It's just, it's just depressing. Like anything with death, I'm just like, ugh. I'm really sensitive about death because like I'm, I'm always nervous about death and all that too. So it's just like, it really gets me like freaked out and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, you know what I mean? So I'm like really like, f like fidgety and shaky and scared of that stuff too. So I don't like talking about it that much. But uh, that was my reaction. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like. Be sure to comment down below what you guys saw this video. And any suggestions you have. Uh, in general, uh, Nightmare Falls, any videos, whatever. And be sure to subscribe to me and Nightmare Falls and turn on both our pro post notifications. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching. Deuces. Peace.